One of the big muscles um, that we're going to start talking about first is called the subscapularis. It's on the front side of the shoulder blade. Um, you can basically access it kind of through the armpit or axilla area, and it connects to the humerus or the, the arm bone. Now, got my little skeleton friend here. And so with his arm up overhead, you can see that this little part of the shoulder blade is kind of exposed. Um, so that's what we're going to be kind of going after with this treatment technique. The two ways that I find to be best for doing this either are with use of a standard cane or a theracane. What you're going to be doing is you're going to be placing the tip of the cane into the armpit, into the back end of the armpit. And what you're going to do, which I'll show you in a second, is you're going to kind of brace this either with your feet or into the corner of a room so it's not going to go anywhere. And you're just going to keep your arm relaxed as you let that uh, tip of the cane sink into the armpit. So... So I've got the cane braced against the wall corner here. I'm going to put the tip of the cane into my armpit, and I'm just going to let my body sink into it. I'm going to find any and all tender spots that I can, and I'm going to treat with 30 seconds of sustained pressure to all of them, which will be the same principle that we're going to use for treating all of these areas. It's always 30 seconds or slightly more of sustained pressure. Um, finding as many of the tender spots that you can find. All these spots will be tender and um, doing it as often as needed. What you should probably find for any of these muscles, again, if you find eight trigger points today and you treat them one time a day, um, probably by next week you're maybe only going to find four to five. And the reason for that is as you are treating the trigger points, the muscle is going to relax, it's going to be able to function better, and it'll actually probably get stronger just with daily activity. If you complement these with a little bit of general strengthening, um, specifically for the muscles that have the trigger points, you'll probably find that you're going to get stronger faster as long as you don't overload them too much. If you overload the muscles five minutes after you release them, they're probably going to develop those same trigger points right back again because it's kind of a protection strategy for the muscle. The pectoralis major and minor connect to the ribs, and they connect to the coracoid process, which is kind of this little forward jutting bone um, right here off of the shoulder blade. And it also connects to the humerus. Pectoralis minor connects here. Pectoralis major connects over here. And if these muscles get too tight, they'll cause shoulder protraction generally, and also internal rotation. And it can cause shoulder impingement. It can overpower um, those muscles on the backside of the shoulder that you need for stability. And if your shoulders are forward all the time and internally rotated, it puts a heck of a lot of pressure on the neck. Now, so for this one, easiest way to do it is you're going to put a ball um, anywhere in this area underneath my hand on your chest. That is tender. And you're going to put that ball there, and you're going to lean onto either the corner of a wall or you're going to open a door like I'm going to do in a minute, place that ball there, kind of move yourself back and forth a little bit, find a tender spot, and just hang out there. Um, as you get better with this, you might find it's harder to find those tender spots. So what you can do is actually move your arm up and back like this when you're trying to find those tender spots. Um, that'll put the muscle in a little bit more tension. And when you do that, you're going to find more things, and you can actually do a more advanced kind of release compared to just basic holding pressure there. So I'm going to show you the very basic kind of release first, and then I'll show you the more advanced one. So for the basic technique, I'm going to put the ball here on my chest, here against the wall, and I'm just going to lean forward. Of course, I pulled that for 30 seconds. I know you can't really see um, where I was putting it too much. My arm was just at my side, but again, it was just right about in here, and anywhere in this area is fair game. Now, for the more advanced technique, 
Now, I, don't have any, I do not have any corners in this room, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the ball here. I'm going to put my hand up in the, the air, and I'm just going to lean into it. And I found a really, really tender spot in the big, broad kind of area of that muscle right here. And I'm just going to hold this. So obviously for this technique that I just showed you with my arm up overhead, you need to have good shoulder range. You have to have fairly good shoulder strength. And if you have any neck issues that preclude you from being able to put your arm up overhead for 30 seconds, that's probably not a technique that I would recommend. One of the other muscles that we're going to be treating on the shoulder is the infraspinatus, which is on the back side of the shoulder blade down here. And you can see that there's this ridge right there. The infraspinatus is below this area and it connects over here to the side of the arm bone. This guy, sorry, his head's on backwards. Um, this is on the back side again of the shoulder blade. The easiest way to do this is take a ball, whether it be a tennis ball, a hard ball, um, something like that, put it in a tube sock, and what you're going to do is you're going to hang that over your shoulder and lean against a wall or a doorway. Again, holding uh, pressure on any and all tender spots for about 30 seconds. Now, the next area, which is kind of adjacent to this, right above it, is the supraspinatus. The supraspinatus is in this area here. Now, you're going to have to kind of put pressure on it from a downward angle. And if you have a healthy back, one of the easiest ways to do this is to use a doorway or the corner of a room with a ball like this again. If you want to keep it in the sock, you're fine to. I'm going to take this ball, I'm going to put it on the top of my shoulder, brace it against the wall, and just lean in. Try to keep your back straight by sticking your butt out, and again, holding on any and all tender spots for 30 seconds here. If you don't have a healthy back, you could also potentially use a cane or a stick, especially if it's got this hooked end and pull straight down into that same area. Um, and if you're not sure if you're in the right area, if you poke around your shoulder with your hand, you can find that ridge. That ridge again being right here. And since that muscle's right on the top of the ridge, that can help guide you to where you want to be for this. Um, the next area that can develop trigger points, and it's usually, in my opinion, a compensation trigger point, is the upper trapezius. The upper trapezius muscles, this muscle right here, the muscle at the top of your kind of shoulder that connects to your neck, that you can kind of grab with your hand. Um, there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can either just kind of pinch a tender spot with your opposite hand, hold for 30 seconds per spot that you find. You can um, do almost the same treatment that I did just a minute ago for the supraspinatus by kind of pushing into the doorway as I'm bent over. Or you can use the cane where you just push into any and all tender spots that you can find again for 30 seconds afterwards. So um, now the trapezius muscle has three different portions of it. The upper trapezius here, the middle trapezius that is between the shoulder blades, kind of in this area where I'm Kind of tickling him, and then the lower trapezius, which connects more down here. Um, you can develop trigger points in any of these areas in the muscles. Now, the rhomboids, which connect from this area in the spine to the shoulder blades, uh, are right below the middle trapezius. And if you're treating the middle trapezius uh, the way I'm going to tell you about it right now, you're probably going to be treating some trigger points in the rhomboids as well. So it's kind of a two for one. And for all of those spots, whether it be the middle trapezius, the rhomboids, or the lower trapezius, the two easiest ways to do this is, again, put your tennis ball or your hard ball in a tube sock, throw it over your shoulder, roll yourself back and forth on the wall, and find those tender spots and just kind of lean into it. Um, if for whatever reason you don't want to do that, you could potentially lie down on the floor 
with a ball um, kind of in the same area, and you're just rolling back and forth, finding the tender spots and relaxing there. You'll be able to relax more in that position. It's absolutely essential when you're doing any of these techniques to remember to breathe and relax the muscle that you're treating. If you're tensing up the muscle that you're trying to treat, it's not going to release very well. Um, and tensing it is probably one of the reasons why uh, it got dysfunctional in the first place. Now, one of the other muscles that um, is important to treat in this area are the teres major and minor. Now, these muscles do kind of opposite functions as far as rotation of the shoulder. They, there you go, connect right here on the outer part of the shoulder blade. One connects underneath and the other one connects over the arm to help kind of stabilize the ball in the socket. So usually for this, um, you're going to have a tender spot on the edge, the outer edge of the shoulder blade, right where these muscles connect to the shoulder blade, and maybe a portion of them midway between where they connect to the shoulder blade and where they connect into the arm. If you put your arm in this position and poke around, you can find the edge of the shoulder blade, and I've got a tender spot right here, and this is probably the in, uh, Terry's minor because it's higher. Um, so I would just hold pressure here. Um, you could also use a ball. If you've got good enough shoulder motion, you can like lean into a wall like this with the ball pressed here. You could do this also on the floor, the same idea. I would be lying on my right side, arm up like this, ball's right here, I'm just kind of leaning on it. You could use your friendly cane again, brace it against something, right now I've got it against a table, and I'm just holding pressure like this. Um, all that works out generally fairly well. Now, um, as far as the, the middle portion of the belly, if you find the outer por portion of the shoulder blade, the upper part, you can kind of trace those muscles. They go kind of in front of that subscapularis on the front of the shoulder blade and a little bit behind uh, the lats um, from what it kind of feels like in this area. The lats are this big muscle that kind of starts down here and comes up and hooks into the um, humerus as well. But those are all the main muscles. If you're going to treat any other muscles in the shoulder, um, these are a little bit hit and miss. The deltoid, which basically connects to the clavicle, a little bit of the outer part of the shoulder blade here, connects down to the arm bone right about in here. This can sometimes have trigger points. Easiest way to do this one, again, ball on the side of the shoulder, put some pressure into the wall on that ball, and find those tender spots again. Treat with 30 seconds of pressure. And then the other spot, which is kind of the last one, um, the triceps, not really a shoulder muscle. However, because of the fact that one of the heads of the triceps connects to the shoulder and the shoulder capsule, it can sometimes kind of substitute for providing your shoulder with a little bit of stability. One of the easiest ways to treat this one um, if for, for you if you find any tender spots is you can basically put your arm on a sorry countertop like this, and you could pinch the tender spots. I find that works pretty well if you've got good hand strength. Um, you could again use your tip of the cane and actually kind of push into any and all tender spots that you can find here as well. Um, but those are some of the options that you have for treating that.